Hi everyone, Claire here. Um, this is just a little disclaimer to explain that my microphone decided to be the one to have issues this week. Um, I didn't realise until it was too late, didn't realise until the episode was over that my microphone was in fact not recording at all, um, which is really frustrating because when it comes to setting up when I'm at Kenzie's house, I'm very meticulous and precise in all my settings and making sure everything runs smoothly and seamlessly as possible so I was very frustrated when I went to play back everything and my voice was just an echo in the background so unfortunately from this point this episode will be quite heavily edited to try and have everything sound sonically nice normally in this situation Kenzie and I would re-record however we found that the chat had been so good and like the vibes were so good in the episode that I'll do my best to edit and just throw it out there and see what happens so apologies again we're just having a bad run with issues at the moment and uh this is just a future joke for Kenzie if she's listening like my laptop truly is possessed because this comes up in another episode I truly do not understand what is going on but thank you everyone for your patience and I hope you enjoy the episode because A Good Girl's Guide to Murder was such a wonderful book to read and such there was such a good discussion around this so thank you Hello everybody and welcome back to Leatherbox Book Club. My name is Claire. And I'm Mackenzie. And today we'll be discussing A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I will start us off with the blurb. We also have guest star Poppy. So if you hear baby sounds, (laughs) ignore her. (laughs) Let's talk about murder with my baby. (laughs) All right. The case is closed. Five years ago, schoolgirl Andy Bell was murdered by Sal Singh. The police know he did it. Everyone in town knows he did it. But having grown up in the small town that was consumed by the murder, Pippa Fitzamobi isn't so sure. When she chooses the case as a topic for her final year project, she starts to uncover secrets that someone in town desperately wants to stay hidden. And if the real killer is still out there, how far will they go to keep Pip from the truth? Alright, thoughts, feelings, emotions, guys? I enjoyed this book. I was worried that it was going to go down a pretty little liar's path. <laughs> and I know you messaged me about that as well, that you were worried it was going to be like a secret twin or something. I was worried that, yeah, it was going to end up in like a tropey feel, like a YA tropey feel. But it didn't. It was engaging, exciting. I love a mystery. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's always the person you most medium suspect. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and what the what they say it's always family member yeah. and all that type of stuff. Yeah. So we should have seen it coming, I guess. Mm. Well usually it is always the boyfriend slash husband, but anything else for your thoughts, feelings? Mm-hmm. You go into yours. Alright. What a ripper of a book. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Like I don't even care that it's YA and like some of the dialogues was a little bit cringy because yeah, it is appealing to that genre but i loved it i was riding alongside it the entire time i was hooked into it i wasn't trying to figure everything out just because of course it was going to sell out for me yeah same i will i feel like at the start sorry to interrupt you i really got stuck into the trying to figure out who it was and then i was like i'm gonna read what happened like <laughs> yeah i didn't try too hard to figure anything out but there are some moments that stuck out to me that i just kept in the back of my mind like the whole mr ward thing sus to me mm. um but I didn't sus- expect Naomi to be the one to, to do it until, yes, of course, because the final realisation mm. and the whole mapping of what happened. I enjoyed it. Pip reminds me, or is becoming like this sort of generation female journalist crime fighting heroine that pops up every, every decade or so. Yeah. <laughs> so this is it for her. Um, this book is making me so excited for the TV series that's yeah. coming out. I'm sure Emma Myers will... Excellent tip. Like oh, Claire's been doing your research. <laughs> Just because I, I was thinking about it yesterday, that thing in Wednesday was a bit quirky, and then Pip, in a way, she's very studious, she does have those quirks, and I think Emma Myers would be able to pull it off, and it'll be great. Mm. I don't know who's playing Ravi, like, I don't know anybody else amongst the cast other than Emma Myers, because mm. that was a big deal. Mm. Um, yeah. I enjoyed this book. I loved it. It was great. It was very gnarly, slippery slope down to the dark and dangerous world of Andy Bell. But didn't expect it to go the way that it did. Um, but of course, it's never going to be as simple. Mm. I felt like as well, I was getting really sucked into the every time um, Andy had a new, not Andy, Pippa had a new uh, suspect. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yep, it's them. Like, yeah. it just makes sense. They did it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, And I felt like I needed to get out like, 
a murder board yeah. <laughs> yeah. and like start figuring things out. Yeah. And I loved just the creativity within this book as well. Like, because this whole book is presented as uh, Pip's final year level like project. And you have the, the production logs and you have the little murder board diagrams and everything. Like, it was just so very almost interactive in a way. And that's what I really enjoyed about this book also. I was very worried that they were going to go down the path of Sal actually doing it, but then all his peers and family and everyone around him was like, he was a good guy, you know, he was never capable of doing this, because in real life that just, it's not always the case, like the most friendliest or kindest person to you as an individual could still be potentially capable of murder, etc, etc. So I was very worried they were going to go down that path, but glad that he is wholeheartedly innocent. Um, yeah, and it was very fast paced, I smashed it out like most of it in two reading sessions, which is pretty good for me these days. Yeah, other than some goofy dialogue, I loved it. Yes, I think I heard what you were saying, but I did get worried when I heard who the alleged murderer was and I thought it was going to go down a racist path without it being racist, but then it was uh, seen that it was racially charged. I was like, okay, so you're acknowledging that as well. I just thought it was going to be that without acknowledging anything, so I was glad that that drew light on it. delicately weaved in as well because it's not outright, oh, you're... This is a racist town, but there are people who, yeah, definitely use that to fuel their hatred towards the family of the of the murderer, I guess. Yeah. I also really uh, connected to Pip because it wasn't in my final year of school, but in year 10 at school, we had, I think it was called like our passion project or something. And yeah, so we had to do, we had to make something and I made a book about like bullying, like cyber bullying and stuff. And yeah, we had like to do all this research and we had to write like in a journal and stuff about our process and everything. Yeah. So I was really into it. (laughs) Yeah. I love that. Within that, like the subtle weaving of all these issues that high schoolers and young people face, like bullying, cyberbullying, blackmailing, also inappropriate relations with a teacher like your highlights all those things and they're just real things mm. that happen in the world and it's not something that i suppose needs to be sugar-coated even though it is a ya book because this could very well be a real situation for somebody out there you know yeah for sure so sh- shall we get into it yeah we can get into it but my final like feeling is like i really enjoyed that despite even though andy did end up dying yeah um there were only i feel like t- three real out of the four that got arrested like three there were three real criminals because you feel like becca didn't have it in her to actually murder her it was just like a negligence and the inability to in that moment help her when andy was choking or unconscious or whatever. yeah so yeah it just brings up that morality and just you know just thinking that i mean like becca technically didn't murder her but but the only real like criminals amongst them are Mr. Ward, mm. Max, and um, the, the drug dealer. So conveniently, they're all men. So <laughs> <laughs> makes it easy. Yes. Yeah. So Pip is, I don't know, a teenager. Like seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. She, she's doing this project. It's five years after the infamous murder of Andy Bell, whose body has never been recovered and I was full no body no crime yeah. uh, I was like she's alive yeah, yeah. <laughs> full Alison De Laurentiis Pretty Little Liars yes. <laughs> where's the yellow top yeah. <laughs> and she yeah is kind of poses the project as something else to her teacher but because her yeah mentor is like well you can't involve anyone blah 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 and she's like lol I won't immediately goes to Ravi the yeah. uh the brother, brother. <laughs> the younger brother of Sal, and goes, I don't think your brother did it. Let's chat. <laughs> it always did sit right with her that he would do something like that. Yeah, so it was the, so Sal was accused of killing Andy, um, and then he allegedly committed suicide yeah. over the guilt. So And, and he sent a, a confession text to his father. Yeah, and so and all the evidence seemed to have piled against him, and then... Oh, because he he was a number one suspect and then he died. Like it was just all the evidence added up to him and he yeah. pinpointed as to being guilty. Case closed. Yeah, it's easy, nice, open and shut. But then also just because of that, then you know Ravi's family are kind of the ostracized. Yeah, ostracized um, from the community and obviously treated very poorly. But also at times, as we've learned through Pip and Ravi's interactions within the community, it is 
at times are racially motivated as well. Mm. And there are often times where Ravi would explain his uh, anxiety for trying to snoop and do certain things because, you know, he would express, like, the last thing he wants to be is the brown kid breaking into, for, for example, like Andy's house, etc. Et yeah. Lovely, very subtly highlighted and but not the entire main focus, which is great. Yeah. So Andy was a couple years older than Pip. She had a group of friends. And Sal's best friend was Naomi, who is Pip's best friend's sister. Yeah. And so they grew up together and it's a whole thing. But she immediately also ends up, Naomi ends up on the suspect list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because there's inconsistencies in the stories that the people are telling about Andy's last night. And yeah, especially as Pip is unraveling and interviewing other people, like, yeah, that is when she finds holes in everyone else's stories. And it's just, mm. yeah, everyone almost to a degree had a motive and it's just annoying how that turned out because mm. then you're like yeah you think all right it's mr ward oh wait but it's no me no me oh wait it could be max oh it could be the drug dealer like who yeah like lovely ride and lovely writing because like i was able to follow it pretty easily as well mm. so very easy read in that regard because sometimes it can be overwhelming reading a murder mystery and like but everything was yeah cohesive and written neatly together and this book is split up into like three parts. Part one and two is essentially the interviewing process, the outlining of Andy's last night, what happened, trying to connect all the pieces. And of course, the third part is the catalyst and the conclusion, which we'll get into later. But yeah, Pip goes on a little adventure, just finding out um, yeah, who Andy was around, like interviewing all their friends, best friends. And... I loved how so her best friends have moved away like they've gone to college and then they've kind of split like they're not talking anymore um and then pip pretends to be one of them and talks to the other one and gets more information (laughs) and i was like damn (laughs) she has ball yeah i mean she's willing to do whatever it takes because yeah this is probably her passion project and she is willing to go so far like she essentially wants to solve this case um because obviously she felt the police did an inadequate job just because everything pointed to sell Pip, capable of doing so much, breaking into someone's house, essentially as well, <laughs> blackmailing a drug deal. Yeah, pretty bad. Up. She's out here breaking the law. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for one man's innocence. Yeah, for a dead man's innocence. Yeah, which you know it's kind of like an obvious character trait for a character like this because you know she is so studious, she is very intelligent, but then she has this sort of uh, unethical <laughs> position of information side to her as well. So it was great. I, I just love. So Pip falls down this investigative rabbit hole, uh, starting with Sal's immediate friends, Naomi, yeah. Max, etc. Leads to like another girl who Andy like bullied, Nat De Silva, who ended up mm. serving some time in jail for assault anyway, just due to the severe bullying that she endured by Andy, which leads to like other people inevitably leads to dealing drugs, yes, <laughs> calamity parties and all this stuff and having a secret relationship with an older guy and yeah. so every person that Pip interacted with is like this person could be the older guy because like the, the term older could be extremely relative could they have been two years older than Andy or could they have been 20 years older than Andy? yeah yeah it was very insane yeah it all started to fall apart though in that like the last night because everyone was at party by Max's house hanging out um, and Andy was meant to be there, but she went somewhere else and then she wanted to meet up with Sal. And so he left to meet up with her. And in the time that he left, it would have been like that when she was murdered. But at first his friends covered for him and said that he left later. But then the next day they went to the cops and said, oh no, he asked us to lie. Cause he asked, he's like, can you tell the cops that I didn't leave? Then I left later. And then they were like, oh, we had a change of heart, blah, blah, blah. But then it came out that they got a text message saying, you need to tell the truth or whatever. Yeah, they were blackmailed. Because I was thinking, I was like, but they're best friends. Like, they're drug dealing and stuff. Like, they're doing all this stuff. It's like, you wouldn't just lie and then go back on it because you had a change of heart. Like, where's the loyalty? <laughs> I was like, there has to be something bigger. Yeah, for sure. And, yeah, it leads down to um, Pip finding like social media profiles, finding a particular photo that Sal would have had to have taken despite not being in mm. it. And that was like the most, the biggest breakthrough or biggest proof of innocence that she's found and brings oh, great relief oh, oh, to Ravi as well. Yeah. And you learn all the different, uh, I don't know, 
exploits of the other other characters, you know, while Pip is figuring this out as well. Mm. Like, um, obviously, the Sal's friend without Sal was involved in another incident, and that was used to blackmail them into uh, going back on Sal's alibi. Mm. And you learn of many, many different things, like Max was meeting women at, at calamity parties and all sorts of bad shit. Max is high on your list because there's a lot coming out about him and like, yeah. he just comes across as just like a shit person. Like, yeah. No disregard for anyone other than himself. Yeah, he was very high on my list. Then, then you think, well, is he even capable of murder though? Like, he can still be like a pretty shit person being yeah. down the dumps, just being an absolute druggie. Mm. But like, you could still not murder people. Yeah. And while Pip is trying to figure everything out, she is also now being targeted by the killer um, wanting her to seek her investigation because she's getting too close to revealing the truth. Mm -hmm. And of course that always happens in these types of media books and mystery cases as well. Um, but spoiler alert, it was revealed that there were two blackmailers. Yeah. <laughs> like, no point in having one, you're going to yeah. have two. It's like on Pretty Little Lies when there was the A-team. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just one person. I think Pretty Little Lies just lost the plot. Really. Yeah. Like, what happened to the original plot of the movie? And I loved how when Pip were, were trying to, I don't want to say interview, but try and acquire information out of something. It wasn't through the, her traditional interview phase. Yeah. <laughs> Like trying to get info out of like Mr. Ward or Elliot and asking about him teaching Andy and what she was like in class and he hadn't taught her for like two years but he did call her out on her bullying, mm. cyber bullying nonsense and then you know that created a sort of uh, hatefulness Andy had towards him etc. And I always thought that that explanation was a little weird because like a teacher calling out a student on their bullying and almost threatening to expel them like that seems fair and like you cop that L, you know, you got caught. But to, for her to be so upset about it seemed a little off to me when when he explained that. But then he hadn't been on the top of the suspect list for ages, so you almost forget about that. Yeah, let's talk about Mr. Ward and what ends up being revealed. Sure. <laughs> Mr. Ward. It always has to be that inappropriate relations with the teacher. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Again, another pretty little lies yeah. thing, perhaps. Elliot Ward. Father of Naomi and Kara. Kara is Pip's best friend, and obviously Naomi and Kara are sisters. Naomi was also friends with Sal, so everyone's everyone's connected. <laughs> Mr. Ward has a secret property that he's been visiting, and it was meant to have been sold, but it wasn't. And Pip ends up going there. Well, she is smart. She plants her phone <laughs> in his car, and then finds out where he's been going big insurance payout so they're essentially rich there's no reason financially for him to be doing this and so Pip yeah. realized that that's a little weird so pip calls the police first smart and goes to the address and of course they were having an inappropriate relationship <laughs> andy and uh, mr ward even though he was married and she was underage <laughs> and you're like oh god but he tried to get out like seemed like he's into that temptation as well but also yeah. he knew that it was wrong and he tried to get out of it and try to make it stop but andy being andy as we learned, she's a bully, she blackmails, she's not a great person. And in turn, she against him, has this leverage against him, etc, etc. Yeah. So, on the night that Andy disappeared, she comes to see Elliot and he pushes her and he thinks he's killed her. But then he sees her in another town and... Oh, she walk, he, he pushes her, he, she hits her head, and but then she just walks away, like yeah. runs off. Yeah. So she, yeah, he has no sight of her. Yeah, but he thinks like... He killed her. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. Guilt and fear, everything. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so then, obviously, it comes out like he killed Sal to cover this up. Yeah. And yeah, which is disgusting. Gross. <laughs> because, yeah. like, if he hadn't had killed Sal, like, it would have just gone unsolved. Perhaps, yeah. But yeah. I think Sal would, with all the evidence, like, it might still have been. And it would just be like, a case of. They needed a person yeah, responsible, yeah. He was yeah. Wrong, yeah. But then Elliot um, says, he's like, oh no, but I saw Andy, though, in like in a different town. She was yeah. messed up on drugs, so I saved her, yeah. essentially. So here I was like, oh my god, I knew yeah, it, like, she's yeah, live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so Pip goes up to the attic, but it's not Andy. Even though the girl says she's Andy, 
It's not. It's just um. For a split second, kind of looks like her. Yeah. It's just um a girl who unfortunately has an intellectual disability, and so Mr. Ward essentially kidnaps. So not only is he a murderer, <laughs> he's yeah. a pedophile and a kidnapper. Yeah. yeah. He is the worst of the worst. Yeah. And it's all because yeah, like don't get tempted by this child. Like, is it really yeah. that hard? Is it really that hard to? fight against yeah <laughs> yeah but he's ultimately like it seems like this dude was having like a good life crisis because he lost his wife he doesn't know what to do he liked the attention of this young girl knew it was wrong tried to get out of it and but then yeah just all the leveraging and all the ruining it was just such a shit situation to be in not to excuse any of his behavior because he's the adult <laughs> like he should know better yeah don't sleep with teenagers yeah don't sleep with teenagers <laughs> that's the message we're talking about mr ward yes and what a psychopath he is. <laughs> all, oh yeah, I was going to say, all to protect his daughters as well as himself, just because they've lost their mother, and Naomi didn't take that well. She's in therapy, she has a plethora of issues. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they just didn't want to, like, lose the, the family, the, the circular family, I guess. And, yeah. But it had to happen, because, yeah, you went a step too far. You may not have murdered Andy, but you did such atrocious things regardless. Yeah. <laughs> and, like... Was he living in his delusion of guilt? Because surely he would have realised that this young girl was not Andy. Like, he just tried to, like... If he I think, him, yeah, he was so, yeah, deluded that he's like, oh, I, I, I fixed it, like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done anything wrong, but lo and behold. Yeah. Um, but I like that he didn't try and kind of kill Pippa, because there's always that confrontation with the suspect, mm. the number one suspect that the, these characters have, and like, they always end up trying to kill each other, which obviously Becca did try and do that. Yeah. Like, yeah, I thought it was going to be Mr. Ward doing that, but him telling his story, it was actually, yeah, obviously heartbreaking in a way, but he's not capable of wanting to murder Pip for it or anything. And, but he also did try and blackmail her um, and get her to stop. And then obviously when she accused him of killing her dog because her dog dies, what the fuck? Why would you kill the dog? <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> well, to be fair, no one killed the dog, allegedly. Mm. But then when Mr. Ward got confused by that statement, that's when I realised, all right, there's obviously another... The Andy killer is actually out there. Mm. Yeah, I was just waiting for the for the words to unravel and waiting for Pip to figure it out. But yeah, what an alleyway. way. Go after the dog as well. <laughs> yeah. So I, just, I knew, like, as soon as there was, like, emphasis on the dog, I was like, something's going to happen to the dog. It was like, check off's dog. <laughs> dog. Check off's dog. Yeah. I love it. It was, hard. it was so sad, having the, getting the dog involved, it was so unnecessary. Mm. Um, but I had to send a message to Pip. And of course, after everything, scouring social media and revising all the interviews again, and she was also blackmailed into destroying all her stuff in order to get the dog back, and obviously that wasn't the case. Yeah. Revising everything, she finally pinpoints Becca and her entire involvement in Andy's murder and disappearance. Yes. Also, when there was a lot of emphasis when I think Pip was talking to Andy's ex best friends, um, they would say that like the the Bell household was pretty toxic, dysfunctional, and then, like their father was a bully. Um, and there was a lot of emphasis on Becca trying to be like Andy, mm. trying to look like her, trying to go to parties, see be her own mini version of Andy, of course. And I suppose that was the ultimate downfall for Becca in a way, because yeah, she went to a party, she would do what Andy would want to do, I guess, but she was, uh, her drink got spiked accidentally, and it, it turns out that Max had assaulted her. Yep. Um, and then Becca found Andy at their house when she, after she'd come from Elliot's place, and she's got a bit of blood in her hair, she's a bit kind of walking kind of wearily. Uh, Becca confronts Andy because she found out Andy was selling the drugs that would... That yeah, uh, ultimately ended up in her sexual assault. Yeah, of course. And so Becca was really upset by that. They wanted to do the right thing. And... But then Andy was like, I don't care because she never truly cared about that. her sister in that sense. Mm. She didn't have that form of protectiveness. I uh, suppose because they were also kind of pitted against each other by their father. Um, and so Andy fell unconscious because of a head injury and then started to choke and then Becca in that moment after all the fighting and arguing she just didn't want to help was neglectful. <laughs> Could you imagine? But like if you were pissed off with someone enough and something happened you'd be like I don't want to help you. Like I could see that. I don't know like. I could see that. 
if someone was like seizing, because I'm assuming that's like because she's vomiting and choking on her vomit, like I don't, I still feel like I'd help. Like I don't know, just I mean, I mean, like she just watched her die. Like your sister was the ultimate reason for your sexual assault, and you haven't felt the same since. Yeah, no justice. Like I, I believe it. Yeah, <laughs> but that's why it's negligence because yeah. she, even though she could have helped. But yeah. at the end of the day, if you don't know first aid, you are not obligated. To <laughs> because yeah, so in the end, like she wasn't really murdered. No, it was just like these circumstances that like ended up in yeah. her death. Yeah, it's all defined as negligent. Yeah. And then as Pip was had that confrontation with Becca, uh, Becca had drunk Pip's drink because obviously. Which like hurt people hurt people yeah, i get that just, but it's like why like you know how much pain and stuff like and obviously like becca's not going to sexually assault pip no. but still like it's almost the same cycle yeah all to protect us yes. but anyway then becca tries to kill pip i'm gonna i guess strangulation like i was it was such like a fast-paced sort of montage yeah. and i was reading so fast that i wasn't really comprehending what was happening so i think becca was trying to strangle pip but then yeah. Becca was like, becca was like I can't do this. Yeah. So I can't actually murder someone. I can't actually murder someone. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so Pip was saved by her family and Ravi because of this whole ongoing thing of her find her friends' tracking devices always on on her phone ever since she was stalking Mr. Ward. So yeah, lo and behold, everything was revealed. All the she gave up her pr- presentation, I guess, to the police and yeah, reopened the case. Case solved once again. Mm. And this was all to just. Prove Sal's innocence, which is very admirable. Yeah, I hope that the um, journalist, oh, who yeah. was a racist piece of shit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah got his comeuppance. Yeah. And yeah, there were these other things, like, because Becca was dating the reporter, and so that's how uh, she got Becca's, uh, she got Pippa's number to be able to blackmail mm-hmm. her, and apparently she did have the dog, she held the dog hostage, but she let it go, and then the dog subsequently fell into water and drowned, so... So mm. yeah, yeah, it's one of those cases where no one actually murdered anybody except for Mr. Ward trying to cover it. Yeah. <laughs> and then Max for sexually assaulting. Yeah. And the drug dealer for dealing drugs for yeah. minors. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Also, it just made me think that, like, it's a complicated situation surrounding Andy and her behaviour. Because she was inherently a pretty bad, dodgy person. And, like, you don't want to say anyone deserves to die. Yeah. Severely bullying somebody. Yeah, blackmailing people was really intense on her uh, relationship with Elliot and just it seems like just like an awful sister, awful person to be around again like it's nothing truly is deserved but it seemed like the, the best outcome for her you know yeah kind of yeah character. her behavior you just can't really come back from unless it's intense therapy and stuff but then sales friends aren't innocent in anything either they had a hit and run incident yeah they didn't help anybody either <laughs> Just that was giving 13 reasons why. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone has a dark secret. But I swear, ultimately what shines throughout this book is just Sal's innocence. Because, yeah, his peers, family members all emphasise how intelligent he is. He was on the way to Oxford. He was smart, mm. bright, kind to people in certain circumstances. I think maybe Nat said that Sal had a couple of like reassuring words to her or something. And like even Pip had a good interact like a very nice interaction with Sal mm. and also when Elliot was talking about how he'd helped Sal with his university and everything it's like you were obviously close as close to a student as you can get without having like a, a relationship like a sexual relationship or whatever yeah but like and then he still had the goal to kill him yeah with his bright future ahead of him yeah like it just yeah it truly does suck I think as well like it's a good I don't know like highlight that this does happen all the time like these kids yeah that are on their bright on their way to bigger and better things just get killed yeah for no reason except for andy andy had nothing going for her yeah andy <laughs> was <laughs> andy almost deserved to die oh, God. <laughs> say it with your whole chest bitch <laughs> andy deserved to be <laughs> oh no but also what also got me was because yeah becca seemed not really capable of properly killing somebody a la the pip example However, you still go as far as to shoving the dead body in a septic tank. Yeah, oh, nice. Oh, also, as Pip was revising all her evidence and information, and she's like, the CCTV, CCTV footage of uh, Andy's car, um, I had a feeling that was Becca as well, because there was so much emphasis on how much she looked like her. Mm. It was like the f- but then I realised it was more the car make and model and not necessarily part of 
quote unquote Andy's face in the footage as well. But yeah, no, it was a crazy story, crazy unraveling. What's the place town called? Little something. I don't like, know. Some full of dark <laughs> secrets. Very I love euphoria yeah. type. So, do you think that you will read Good Girl, Bad Blood? Oh sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna assume it's based in the same town. Yeah. And Pip. Because then I think like. Surely there's not that much gnarly crime happening in the town and in that community. But then I look back into my current town and community. Yeah. <laughs> stuff that I don't know about. Mate, you should look at um oh, no. and their history oh, and crime. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, I just found that bewildered. I'm thinking, surely there is no other gnarly stuff happening. But, again, there is probably crazy stuff happening and mm. crimes happening in my town right now that I have no clue about. And situations that are also unfolding and unravelling. But yeah, no, excellent book. I loved it. Again, don't care about the YA aspect. Loved Pippa. I liked Ravi and him growing into wanting to fight for his brother's innocence as well. And they sort of develop a bit of a relationship towards the end as well. More of a romantic one, Ravi and Pip. Mm. Which was cute. Yeah. He's always going to be like that. Yeah. I just, yeah, Pip is just so three-dimensional. Like, smart, studious. Again, able to do the nitty gritty work in order to get the information that she wants and the evidence that she needs. She was also, I like that she did have that shutdown moment when when she just dis- d- destroyed all her stuff. Yeah. The dog still end up dying and she's like, realized that like I'm putting everybody in too much danger. Yeah. She was willing to cease and call it quits. Mm-hmm. Then of course, Ravi uh, persuades her to continue in secret, of course. But you know, it was great. I love this book. But the only downside is that there are so many characters to keep track of and so many stories. And yeah, if you are someone trying to figure it out before it's revealed, like, you know, there's so much information there. But then justice and common sense almost prevails in the end as well. Yeah, to To a degree. degree. (laughs) Yeah, it's like people still died. (laughs) Yeah. Collateral damage, unfortunately. So, do you know what the second book's about? Uh, Pip starts a podcast about this <laughs> and it's gone viral um, oh and then Jamie Reynolds disappears. Oh. So, yeah, she That's has to funny. figure that she out. Yeah, and the, the cops aren't doing anything about it, so she of has course. to figure it out. Of course, negligent cops. Mm. Oh, and yeah, also there was like a whole, like Nat's brother was a cop and then there was that idea potentially that it could be a cover up or the cop being able to access all this evidence information, able to sweep stuff under the rug. Yeah. Yeah, there was a whole lot of, a lot of strings to boards and yeah. photo boards and it was great. I loved it. Yeah, I was there like that meme with all the mathematical <laughs> equations going, like trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although on the Kindle, because they did have like a picture of the murder board and a picture of... Yeah, I thought there was going to be a bit more murder board. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, with the diagrams and the murder boards on the Kindle, it was kind of hard to read and hard to look at, hard to view. But it's cool. It just adds to the creativity of the book. And, like, books don't have to just be words on paper. It can be fun creatively with a murder board or a description. And I liked the implementation of the transcripts of her interviewing characters because it saves us going through proper pages of dialogue in order to get all that out. It's nice and succinct. It's great. It was very uh, show, don't tell. It was done really well. And I liked that, yeah, you had the transcripts or, yeah, like her journal notes. And it wasn't like she had the conversation and then we had to regurgitate it and read it again. It was good. But it was interesting that some people, it was in the transcribed form and other interviews were one-on-one, like in the moment at that time. Yeah. It was very cool and interesting. I love that structure. Alrighty, any lingering thoughts, feelings, and emotions? Uh, no, I'm ready for stars, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shall go to the stars, I It's just a segment mm-hmm. on our podcast that is plucked on the star review and five star review from Goodreads. <laughs> we start with the one star review to end up, so we can end on a positive And Poppy loves Poppy's got a lot to say. Stuff. I'm so sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Right now. <laughs> it's at age, you know. Yeah, They're... Okay. Oh. <laughs> Start them young, Start then them get them clean early. early. Yeah, All right, so I have a big one star, so okay, but then I have a couple. I have two one stars and one five star. 
I'm very concerned for this author. It appears they have never met a real human being in their life. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Outrageous allegations. And then school projects are getting really wild these days. Do you think we're maybe putting too much pressure on kids? I mean, see, I, re- I read a little bit of the acknowledgements and, like, it's inspired by true crime in general. So, like, people who have their true crime podcasts and true crime shows. So, like, of course it's going to have that aspect to it. Yeah. All right, so my one star review. And we didn't try hard to find these. I don't know. I didn't try very hard. I don't know <laughs> It was too long. So I kind of hated this book. It was so boring and the writing was so childish. I was half invested in the mystery, half just wanting this book to end. I found some of the plot points ridiculous and I was laughing at how ridiculous some scenes went down. Like seriously, the dog? I honestly was shocked at that, genuinely. I was still hoping for it to get better at that point and then I lost hope. You get it, she's a good girl. It's in the title, right? There was such an emphasis on her being a study machine and for her to be so studious, she was high key kind of dumb. <laughs> the ending was only alright, but it was definitely better than the other three quarters of the book. The ending slightly made up for it, but not really. The mystery wasn't good enough and the plot twist was kind of felt off the the writing and dislike or felt neutral the characters. You know what, people need to grow some balls and just stop reading. Have fun. Like, no, but stop reading. Touch some grass. Touch some grass. Yeah, stop reading and go touch some grass. If you don't like it, finish it. You know what? I've read one page of a book once and I was like, I know this ain't going to be for me and I didn't finish it. And then did you leave a paragraph review as to why you only read one page? No, I didn't. Because <laughs> you have self-control. Yes. I don't know, some people, I just want their opinion. Yeah. All right, my five star is no words, five out of five, I'd sell my soul to read it for the first time again, which I think is a bit much, but... <laughs> Like, it's a good book, but it's not life-changing. I'm not going to read it again in a hurry. Yeah. Alright, I have two of the screenshot. I love this book. I was hooked. I genuinely couldn't work out who it was. Everything was so incredibly detailed, and you really go through the whole journey. And then underneath it was loved it so much. Nice. Alright, and with that, that concludes this episode of just vibe, Poppy. Just vibe out. <laughs> Thanks for listening. As always, find us on Instagram at letterbox underscore book underscore club. From there, our link tree is on the bio. It's on the bio in the bio. <laughs> you okay? Love y'all. <laughs> All right, Poppy. Any final words? <laughs>